I love my wife. Uh huh. I love my wife, but I don't think we can burn together. Is she uh, one of the people that the burn is not necessarily for? She rocked it. She fucking mm. rocked it. She just burns differently than you. Yes. I burn differently than when I'm in the default or even at pagan stuff. I like to build and go and do things and then party in between. I like to have a, a schedule of do things. I can't just be free, do whatever the fuck you want. <laughs> Not, yeah. Do you do you go into the what, when, where and find things that are uh, calling to you and then like make yourself an agenda? I did that my first year. I went to go listen to you guys at BMIR <laughs> and missed it. But then I met some really fucking great people. Such is the way. Right. And I just experienced um, the trickery. <laughs> met a burn family from an international burn family. So it's that's what I got completely wrong. You think you have a plan and have that plan, but also be open to the opportunities. Welcome to this being accuracy to third. Rex here, am. Yeah, and I'm Beth. This is how we intro things these days. Don't give me that face. We're, say your name. Uh, say your name. Why don't we say just, your name? We should warm up before we even try to do this. <sighs> Fine. Well, warm, 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 blah. Hi, guys. Hi. Hey. How are you? I'm doing okay. Yeah? What would you guys do today? You left the house for a good long while. We walked all the way around the lake. Yeah. Walked around the lake. Uh, listeners, if you're in the Bay Area and you have not come to check out Lake Merritt on the weekends, uh, you're missing a trick. Bring your mask. Bring a, a blanket to lay out on the grass. Bring some cash for the vendors. Go home with treasure. Yeah, there's like a shocking amount of uh, illegal bars set up. Lake Merritt. It's better than Dolores Park. Oh, so oh, much, it's better so much better. Oh, it's so much better. Like, all the space you need to spread out, you're never going to feel crowded. You don't have to, like, wait for the drug vendor to come to you. They've got an easy up with a sign telling you what you can buy there. And you can also get tons of crystals and incense along with your magic mushrooms and uh, cocktails. Did they have tank tops? Of course. There's someone wearing, uh, selling, like, really fuzzy sweatshirts. Like, like. Oh, and airbrushed ball caps. Yeah. yeah. Lo lots of like handmade fashion and art. It's pretty cool. Like, I'm not joking. It is a, I feel more civic pride uh, about Oakland over the past couple of weeks than I've ever felt about any community I've lived in. I mean, we passed macro. Uh, we're defunding the police. You can buy magic mushrooms. Oakland. Oakland. We'll see you at the, the lake. The, the <laughs> lake is wonderful. The driving is psychotic. Yes. Yeah. Don't don't uh, believe that. Yeah. Uh, don't don't go in the street in Oakland. <laughs> <laughs> and don't believe that anybody believes what a stop sign says. Stop signs are a suggestion to watch where you're going when you cross the street in Oakland. Also, stop signs are an invitation to uh, get some cheap thrills violating the law. And just heads up, that, that bike lane might just be a lane lane. <laughs> yeah, bike lanes for passing only. <laughs> <laughs> the only traffic law we have in Oakland is there are speed bumps. I'm so glad your speed bump is back. I was... And so better than ever. I noticed it is brutal. Yeah. They, they were taking it at like 50, 55 without the speed bump. I understand why there are speed bumps on our road now. Yeah, <laughs> listeners, we our, our house is at uh, the bottom of a block that curves up in both directions uh, and just got freshly paved. Uh, so there's a speed bump right in front of our house, a brand new speed bump. Uh, that's just hours of entertainment and, if we're sitting on the it's porch. it's now like you, it's not <coughs> marked other than these little reflectors. So during the day, people don't see it. And it's the exact same color as the freshly paved road. Uh, speed bump. The most entertaining thing about your house thus far. Oh, come on. Speed bump over rat tree? <laughs> rat tree. Rat tree ain't bad. Rat tree adds for a lot of laughs. Yeah, I'm rat tree is better than the cats we have. And rat tree is seasonal. Rat, rat, tree, rat tree is sometimes like purple. Purple with vermin. 
Rat Tree, my favorite is like hanging out with people who don't know about Rat Tree. 35 feet tall and quavering. <laughs> with all this tiny little squeaky screeching coming from it. Possum got in there. Never coming out. <laughs> Speaking of never coming out. Yeah, D-Day, why don't you tell us why you have called us here today? Well, I'm up and at him again after after spending, like, the better part of a day laying on the couch. Oh, yeah. Guess who got their, their COVID shot? Somebody got the J&J stick. Yeah, and not to brag or anything, but if there's a Burning Man this year, I might be able to go to Burning Man. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We all might be able to go to Burning Man this year if we are vaccinated, if there is Burning Man. And it sure seems like there could very well be a Burning Man this year. I am getting ever increasingly more excited for Burning Man. I had let it go. I had let it go, and now I'm like, I'm not getting attacked <laughs> yet. I was a lot more dubious in until we hit 100 million vaccinations in a... Uh, 42 days when we were shooting for 100 days. Mm. That's great. That Like, there's no reason that we can't all be good and vaxxed up by the time August runs around. Yeah. So, as you can see, we have all convened because it's maybe good news. It's maybe good news. Here we are doing podcast stuff for Burning Man. Podcast about Burning Man. Burning Man stuff at podcast. Wow. Say Burning Man again. Guys, could you imagine making a podcast about Burning Man that wasn't just, like... Sad. <laughs> I'm just like, boy, that's a thing we like that we can't do anymore for the foreseeable future. Not not up until two or three weeks ago. So maybe, maybe we should talk about why the fuck Burning Man's important again. We really are going to get into uh, why and how Burning Man can be important in this episode. So this is the content warning for this episode for military sexual trauma. This episode has not our first guest who is a military veteran who goes to Burning Man. Yeah. Nico is one of the rare guests who, once we get them on microphone, we immediately fall into a very comfortable, friendly patter. I met Nico before we interviewed Nico. Yeah, we all did. At our listener appreciation party. At our party. listener appreciation party. Yeah. Um, actually, that brings up something that we should... Uh, talk about, which is that if uh, the event is happening this year, we're going to need a listener appreciation party. We let's, just got back and we're already shilling. Yeah. Let's let's not put the party before the event. Don't, <laughs> don't make me get my hopes up and then have them dashed again. Let's just chill. We'll put the ask for a location for the party in an episode that Beth edits. <laughs> <laughs> we'll know that we're really going back to Burning Man when Beth starts editing episodes again. When Beth is no longer so depressed that she can no longer stand Burning Man content. Yeah, oh, y'all have been getting my broad editing strokes for the past several months. That's why the episodes have been so long and meandering. And you're welcome. That's how you get more of us when we put out fewer episodes. <laughs> more broader content. Speaking of broader content, let's... Hear from Nico. Second burn, I brought my wife with me, and we had friends here in the default pagan family that um, went, and we had a seven hour playa date with them, and it was amazing and short and long and so many things happened in <sighs> the weird flexiness of time at Burning mm -hmm. Man. It's something I'm starting to notice again in uh, the time of quarantine. Shit that is very short seems to take ages and weeks go by in the blink of an eye. Yeah. The time before is a mirage. Okay, now <laughs> wait a minute. Here we go. Let's flip this shit. Have you ever had that happen at Burn? Yes, definitely. Every year. Every year? Yeah. There's a, a campfire out in Deep Playa that... I've heard about this. I have been at... Like 11 o'clock in trash fence. Yeah. Uh, I, I've sat at that campfire either twice or 35 times, uh, always with the same 
woman tending it. Uh, <laughs> I think I've heard this before on one of your podcasts. I'm sure. It's yeah. like something from Sandman. <laughs> like it, it's just a place that exists in the universe. And sometimes you come upon it and there is warmth and like a, a marshmallow and, mm -hmm. and you sit and there is subdued conversation and then you feel self-conscious and you leave. There may be coffee. Sometimes oh. there's coffee or maybe there was never oh, coffee. See, yep. That's the mom camp or the fairy camp. Mm -hmm. There's always food, coffee, Warmth, fuzzy things, glitter, jerky, alcohol. Yeah. <laughs> I, I like the sound of that camp. That sounds like, like a good camp to be set up with. Can't we agree that there should never be glitter? And certain, well, yeah, I mean, not at burn, <laughs> but everywhere else, fuck you. There's going to be glitter Ugh. with me. Oh, then don't come to my, then don't come to the Urban Fairy Hollow. I've just, like, they, I've, I, I've done enough drag and drag adjacent stuff that, like, I, I don't think it's cool that, like, there's glitter. <laughs> Full stop. They do make biodegradable glitter. Uh, I, I sold it at so. my last job. Yeah? Yeah. Gross. I, you can't take it to Playa because it needs no, a biome no. to degrade into. Not. But like I've rescued old school glitter. Like this shit is mm, special. Because <laughs> it's like 1970s Vintage glitter. glitter. <laughs> Does it have just a touch of radium in it? I don't fuck. I, I think it's just... <laughs> shards of metal there's your tingy metal thing yeah there that's after drinking a whole bunch of like glitter water that's how you have a tinkle piss how does your wife burn that's something you would have to ask her about but what i observed is she wanted to connect with me and do my thing, but I had my plans to set up camp, went and did orientation at the cafe, and then I had three shifts. And then we did a volunteer shift at Artica together, and that was fucking rad. But I like to have my alone time, and she likes to do group activities. I don't mind group activities, but I don't like large. Like, when our camp goes out for burn night, I've been with you guys all week. I don't necessarily want to be with you for a night or we can start off that way, but I like to go off on my own. I'm more adventurous than she is. And that's my opinion. I could be wrong. She likes to be adventurous with a group, not by herself. You go off and have adventures on your own and stay on your own. It's you just have to be open and free. Like, OK, so I went to go see some friends at friends that I have in the default at Hammered and Sickled. And so, God, where the fuck were they? Like, way on the other side of the fucking city. And so I'm riding my bike, and I got winded, and I was out of water. I didn't set myself up for success. Stopped off at a ranger post, and it was over, like, at 9 o'clock or 8.45 and, like, B or C. And stopped and had some water. They offered, what do you want to drink? And I said, I would just, I just want to say shade. So it's like I pulled up on my bike like it was an old western. <laughs> And I didn't know this was going to be planned. And I got stuck there for like an hour and a half, just drinking some water and having a drink. And then I continued my way over to Hammered and Sickled, being open to those opportunities. Um, and I can just go by myself. My wife is not as adventurous and that's OK. Do you have plans to go again, but separately? Yes. Smart. So I learned this last burn. I love bubbles and boobs. I love doing work access and setting up camp and that sweat equity. Mm -hmm. This is the type of burner I am. And then set up camp and then get ready for what you're providing, your gift and your common area. And then I did other things. I wanted to volunteer and I learned that from my first burn from a campmate that's no longer a campmate. And we'll leave it at that. And so that led me to cafe. So set up camp, went and did my orientation and then did my three shifts. And I was addicted. Like there's more you can do at burn than just go see things and play on things and dance party. And I, I have to stop you there. Cause, um, I am pretty sure that every shift at the cafe includes at least a little bit of dance party. Oh yeah. That's fun. too. <laughs> <laughs> did, did you get up on the bar? No. You know, that bar is built to hold human weight. While you dance. Well, I'm I'm an awkward giraffe with fairy wings and dreadlocks. So uh, have, 
have you been to Burning Man? <laughs> That's most of us. You are legion. You are one of legion. <laughs> Let me tell you, I'm also that person that when they go to go on to that that fun, fucked up thing called 27 Steps, yeah, I'll hang out with the bikes, watching you. Oh, fuck, they're going to biff it. Okay, you can do it. Survive. Don't kill yourself. Uh, you've uh, you've got a friend in D-Day there. He, he did not. Uh, did you even get up onto the first step? Uh, yes. Yes, I think I got on to maybe three. <laughs> and was just like, oh no, this is some bullshit. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's a big bull of nope. Yeah, this is this is one of the ways you die. <laughs> Not I, today, baby Jesus. Yep. Hell Satan with vodka. I don't think you would die falling off of that piece, but boy, you might well, wish shit, you would. Did you see at the top, there's nothing for you guys to hold on to. Oh, I know. I just, I don't think you'd go straight down and hit the ground. I think you would get shredded on your way down by those cables and you'd hit the, <laughs> you'd hit the bottom alive, but uh, nah, man. severely lacerated. I smack my like head on that boulder on the way down and <laughs> it doesn't matter what happens to me at any point past that. <laughs> Fuck you. I don't balance. <laughs> Balancing's for suckers. And my wife is 4'10", and she got up there, and she was like, oh, fuck. And she's got a nice, thick ass to hold her down. <laughs> she's tiny. <laughs> and I seen her up there, and I seen her, I'm like, oh, fuck, oh, fuck. She finally makes it down. I'm like, what happened? She goes, I don't know. The wind caught me, and it was scary. And there was some dude behind me with an accent saying, come on, baby, what's the problem? Hurry up. Oh, God. She's like, there was nothing to grab onto, and then there's just cables. It's such a genius mm. piece because the the entire first half of it, it's easy. It's like big, yeah. giant steps up rocks that are moving a little, no big deal. And then you get to the top and suddenly it's the most terrifying thing in the world. That top rock just will not stop moving. And then you get down and you're like, fuck yeah, I made it. I <laughs> live another day. I would go up and down that thing again in an instant. I loved that. That was great. Dangerous yeah. climbing things are maybe my favorite mode of Burning Man art. Fuck rocks, fuck cars, fuck things built out of metal and fuck things built out of wood. Wait, oh, the cars, the cars that were stacked up like playing player one. That that is like easily top ten all time pieces. Loved that they thing. They shut it so down much. mid burn lap that year. I don't think it made it past Tuesday. No, it didn't. I think it ended at two in the morning on Tuesday. Yeah. How'd you make your way to Burning Man? Uh, the first time? Yeah. We U-hauled it. So that was a fucking story. It was amazing. Yeah. Well, first of all, we had like a Seinfeld moment. You say you have a reservation, but you really don't have a reservation. Uh-huh. Did it work? No, we were supposed to have a truck. Ah. We didn't, and like the crew cab, like style it. Okay. Didn't happen. So we attach it and it's dipping down. So when you're driving the chains are going to create sparks that's going to set a fire yep we had too much shit but my burn sister thought it would be fine okay so we do this they see that we let it go we bring the trailer back and get a small i think it was like a one bedroom two bedroom truck marcy and i just army shit pack that thing Use the um, ratchet straps to strap our bikes to the side of it. <laughs> Just and like on, on the outside top. of it? No, 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 no. That's when you go to pagan festivals. <laughs> 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 so we pack everything in according to how we're going to pull it out to set up for shade and whatnot when we first get there. And everything else is packed. And then we use the bikes on top and then on the sides with ratchet straps. Haul that shit in. Crank, 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 crank. It was a whole battle. My burn sister and Edie, who's one of my burn sisters, 62 motherfucking years old. She's amazing. They seen we were hangry, so they went and got burgers while we packed everything. By the time we got done, we're like six hours late for leaving now. <laughs> Only six. That's that's pretty good for your first time. I feel like my very first burn, we were almost 24 hours late leaving. Um, also, several of our friendships had been ended. 
<laughs> Fuck you. I don't like you anymore. <laughs> the first year I went, we were almost 24 hours late and we ended up leaving people behind just to leave. <laughs> um, and Fuck then you this, guys, you don't have your shit together. We're gone. Right. <laughs> it's like this truck, we, we converted it to biodiesel. It is not going to be making it up the passes very well. So we just need a head start right now. You guys can break up later or break up now uh-huh. and we'll see you on the road. <laughs> Fucking work it out on the wave. <laughs> Uh, I I like how the options were break up or break up. Uh huh. Oh yeah. No no no. That relationship wasn't lasting. The drive to Burning Man, let alone Burning Man itself. <laughs> Sometimes that's what you get. So we get they go and get us food, and we're packing, and Marcy and I are hangry, and we're kind of pissy because if they just would have fucking listened to us, she sees that I'm upset, and so she's like, "Let's just do self care and sit down." So we sit down, and we smoke. And drink, and she says, look. I was like, when do we get to go? She goes, look, we're there now. It's called Green Man, because we're in the Pacific Northwest. It's so fucking late. We need to sleep. So we all slept, and Mango's house is a community house named Tranquilandia. We get up at, like, 3 in the morning. We got to burn at 7 o'clock in the evening on Friday. Friday pre-Burning Man opening or Friday? Right, for theme, yeah, for theme camp. So you were getting in early, yeah. So your very first time on Playa, you were coming in early. Yes. That's the way to do it. Yeah, that's that's a lucky break right there. So we were in the U-Haul, and then I got out of the U-Haul, and we were in line and dancing. I went to go to the bathroom, and I got fucking yelled at for going across the um, flag lines because I had to go to the bathroom, and I'm a pissy princess, and I have a weak bladder, and you're not supposed to be out in there, so I get... I'm like, I just need to go to the bathroom. Where the fuck do I go? Tell me where to go. Oh, so we get there. It's dark. It's nighttime. We're tired. By this time, we've been up for 23 hours. That's when you start to hallucinate. And then there's a windstorm. Well, of course, you're in the gate line. There's no gate line that isn't like the whiteout misery of hell. This year, I got pulled over. Yes! Really? Where, where did you get pulled over? Right after we got off of Blacktop onto Playa. Oh, what? Whoa! What, was, boop, boop, boop. what did they say? Because my were wife's doing? black. <laughs> 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 I mean, we're in a Subaru with a fucking red wagon packed with furry fucking bikes. One's a rainbow cruiser, and the other one's a pink furry cruiser. <laughs> So we just bought the Subaru to go to burn. And so she had temporary tags. Oh, that's my nice. mate. Yeah. And because it wasn't dusted off. So it was fun oh. to fuck with them. Oh, you, you've got temporary tags and I can't see them clearly? Because we have tinted windows. Uh-huh. And we were just excited to get to burn, you know? <laughs> that's suspicious. Being excited to go to a party. Right. So they pulled us over and I handled it and was smarty pants with dreadlocks. That was fun to play with them. Uh-huh. <laughs> Yeah, I feel the same way. Um, Oh, God, no, I don't. I was just like, please don't arrest us. Please don't arrest us. Please don't arrest us. Please don't arrest us. That's what I say. Beth, don't say anything. I I didn't say anything. I did accidentally pull out my knife. They asked if I had any weapons. Do not take out a knife. (laughs) This this lily-ass white girl is like, I've got a knife right here. <laughs> mm-hmm, I do, but I'm not telling you. Yeah. Oh, God, that stressed me out hearing that again. Oh, yeah. Ah. <laughs> My wife says, we're getting fucked. And I'm like, wait, what? 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 What's going on? She goes, babe, we're getting pulled over. I'm like, fuck, hide the pin. Where the fuck is the pot? Hide that beer can because we drank a beer with some friends and wine. <laughs> we get pulled over and they ask us and I explain everything. But while we were in line, we're next to somebody that had like a pop-up trailer. He was a POC as well. After they got done with us, they went and hightailed and got him too. Oh, Jesus. So my wife's like, what the fuck? Are they Are they just pulling over POCs? What? And I'm like, it's because you're not dusty. You don't look white enough yet. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? They were bored, and it was the first wave coming in, so... They're just pulling over any excuse. Yeah. Yeah. Right, right. Did they ask to search your vehicle? No. So when they they asked me and they pulled me over, this was fun because I love it because I'm a white woman with dreadlocks, and I'm tall. They pulled us over, and I'm trying to get out, and, oh, stay in your car. I'm like, okay. 
So I shut my door and then I just crack my windshield and I tell my wife, don't say anything. He's like, uh, where's your, do you have your license and insurance and everything? I'm like, yeah, right here. What are you pulling me over for? Well, your back window, I can't see. And now I see that it's, you just, what's with the temporary tags? And I'm like, we just bought the car. Do you need that information? Yeah. So we show him. <laughs> And I'm like, can I get out of the car now? And he's like, yeah. And I was like, okay. So I was a smarty pants. You know, the sheet protectors that you use in binders. Uh huh. So I had one of those and I was going to get it and put it in there and tape it to our window. But I got fucking distracted, went to Summer Lake, soaked, slept and continued on. So I forgot. And that's what I told him. And he's like. Okay, and I'm like, because I work for the federal government. Oh, yeah, I'm like, yeah, I work for the VA. I was going to say, I feel like vets, you, you've you got, like, an in with stupid cops. Like, don't you have a ring or something you can flash to get you out of speeding tickets? <laughs> <laughs> I've been told by movies that this works. That's when you're active duty and you have out-of-state plates, um, really... That only works for 30 days because by law, when you move, you have to change your license. So most military people have several driver license that have been transferred depending on where they live at what base in the United States or overseas. Does the base like do your paperwork for you when you change? You can get the new state ID or. Nope. Nope. That's your responsibility. Doing your work for you would be socialism, Beth. Oh, right. Right. I just thought since they, they fly you out there, right. (laughs) <laughs> Sometimes they give you a house. I don't know. Military, I don't understand it at all, right? It's lovely. People are nice. It's a structure, kind of like Bernie Man. We have a couple of veterans on our crew, and they it, it's been really gratifying to hear them saying how much military folks would do great out there and would really love it. We do. We're pretty structured. We got a mission to do. We want to be comfortable, get the shit done so we can do the shit. Do the thing so we can do the thing. <laughs> So, Nico. Yeah. Is that your playa name? No, nope, you know, that's what I came to the playa with. I'm, I, Nico was Nico before the playa. Is so, there a non Nico playa name or was Nico just too, nope. uh, too good to let go? It's just who I am. Yeah. When, when you already have a spirit name, you, you get to take that to playa. Don't I think. Don't say that. Uh, I am not going to stop. Just, Please. Until until otherwise dubbed. I mean, I've only been two years, so it it's good that you you recognize the necessity of uh, acquiring a play name as opposed to uh, adopting. Right, and not all play names wanted. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, if I get one at this point, it's going to be a real bad one for an incredibly stupid reason. Um, And why not? Because it's burn. Yeah, I mean, I think that's the only way that I'm getting one and adopting one at this point. But I've always been known as Nico, the fucking fairy in my pagan community. Even my kids know. Is that your your full name and title? Mm. Like if That's you, my magical name. If you were to get a, a volunteer role at Burning Man and they made you a staff laminate, would it say Nico the fucking fairy on it? Fuck yeah. Great. I like that. <laughs> fuck yeah, fuck yeah. So this last year was your second burn? Yeah. Is it your second consecutive? Are you are you very, very new? Yes. What took you so long? Fuck, I don't know. <laughs> Fuck, I honestly, uh, you know what? I had to find myself and had to be my self advocate. Because the way how everything is so fucking surreal, I don't even know how to explain it. So Content here we go. Content warning military sexual trauma. I suffer from PTSD because of MST which is military sexual trauma. I was in the military and we were put on lockdown during Labor Day weekend to go to Haiti when the Haiti and Cuba thing was going on. Mm -hmm. Went there and some horrible shit happened to me in a porta potty. And then we were supposed to be there six months. We got done sooner and pulled out. And so I was home by the first of the year. 
that's the hardest time of the year for me for the last 23 years. And so then I just was battling with my PTSD and alcoholism and everything else and life and finally got my shit together. And then I felt like a drive to do something. So I reached out to a friend of mine, Mango, who I know in the pagan community, and I know she's a burner. And I said, I really want to invest in myself and I want to go do something like this. And it just so happens at the same time. She's like, yeah. And she asked what my intent was. And I told her I need to create happy memories during that time of the year when really ugly shit happened to me. Mm -hmm. My own therapy, because talk therapy wasn't working through the VA. So we went and there was um, another virgin and her name is Marcy. And she's a veteran as well. So we were virgins together. And that was our first year as Bubbles and Boobs. And it was amazing. And that's when I first started listening to your podcast, why I was getting ready and water training. So that's how all this journey and I got hooked. Water training? What, what were you? Oh, drinking lots of water to make sure that I'm ready. Ah, uh, mm -hmm. just getting yourself in the habit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, getting plump. Yeah. <laughs> getting Jose. Get, yeah. Getting those cells real opened up. Mm -hmm. Right. Real and especially for me having sensitive skin and knowing I'm a heat casualty from when I was in Haiti, it took my mind away from all of that stuff that triggers me and preparing me for something fucking fabulous. Did you experience any, uh, return to experience at Burning Man. I, I know a lot of uh, veterans find the intensity of the Burning Man experience to be uh, reminiscent of their time in the service. Yes, because you're preparing. So like when you get ready to be deployed, you have to railhead. And when you're packing stuff, you can't have metal on metal. And railheading is putting your connexes and all your vehicles onto the um, flatbed uh, rail cars, mm -hmm. shopping them down and getting them ready to be put onto the ship. So it's kind of like that at Burning Man, too. I mean, even with the noise. I mean, my first year when I went out, it was amazing and overwhelming and amazing. Mm-hmm. I seen so many things and then like burn night. I was like, I can't do it anymore. I left, I left my whole camp at slut garden and I walked home and I missed an opportunity to go to deep play, but I was just done. My eyes couldn't see it uh -huh. more. So I just went back to camp and closed my eyes and hung out in a hammock and listened. And it was fucking magical. It is a, a really hypnotic soundscape on burn night. It's, yeah. <laughs> uh, most nights, really. Right. It, it just depends on uh, where you are and what's going on and what energy you are in and who Content you're Content warning, military sexual trauma. You did mention that you went out to Burning Man with a, a set intention, um... Uh, a therapeutic intention. Right. So that's somatic therapy. Do you feel like you accomplished your mission? Did, did Burning Man do the thing for you that you wanted it to do? Oh, yeah. It really challenged me. You know, I'm just going to be frank. I'm sure you'll be able to catch my drift. So in my first year, I went with a camp meet and met some really great people in the pit. They do Department of Motor Vehicles, DMV. Oh, so is the pit their living area? Yes. And her name is Fractal and his name is The Wiz. She works in the ticket box. So my campmate brought me to meet them to be open to an opportunity. Wink, wink. Uh-huh, uh-huh. A moment of uh, discreet adventure. Great. Uh-huh. Here's these opportunities. And so we shared our drink, our shot, Go to the bathroom because I'm a pissy princess and I know we're going to go on the play and we're walking. Go into the porta potty in this camp and all of a sudden I hear the Chinook and it was a Chinook. Whoa, 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 helicopters. Yeah. And ha helicopters huh. were going over when I was in Haiti and I was uh, 
coming out of the porta potty and pushed back in and uh, violated by my NCO. But this time, I was at Burning Man in the pit in the bathroom. Just had a drink, went to the bathroom, and got stuck and hurt it. And Fractal and my campmate, who's been several times, taught me about volunteerism and everything, said, Nico, are you okay? And I'm like, yeah. Are you triggered? I'm like, yes. Okay, you know you're safe, right? I'm like, yeah. Where are you? I'm at Burning Man. Are you ready to come out of the bathroom, go on our adventure? And I said, yes. And I came out of that porta potty, not being attacked, but going on the most amazing adventure. I, we went to Baba Yaga and listened to that most amazing orchestra. Then went over to Reverbia and heard Alan Parsons play his whole album. Oh, that's what? right. That happened. Yeah. Right? And I'm not crying. Yes, I am. It was the most cathartic trigger therapy, somatic therapy session that the VA and all of their pills could never ever give me and from that point on I was a better communicator in dealing with myself and being aware and it just totally helped me with my daughter who's been on this journey with me and my PTSD for 21 years and now my wife of six years and it's just been better ever since that's hang on for a minute hang on for a minute I gotta rouse some shit up <laughs> it's really loud and it's all about me. It's my birthday fucking weekend. <laughs> Boobies. <laughs> so we have a yeah, house Yeah, if full. those people could get out of the fucking room, I wouldn't be upset. <laughs> the 21-year-old is in the kitchen cooking. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, and apparently we're finishing the floor. <laughs> I'm, I, was, I was picturing flying a drone. That's either a blender or a food processor. <laughs> Fuck those drones. My first year, we were packing up, and there's one that came and flew down and was watching us. So I flipped it off, and it wouldn't go anywhere, so I flashed my tits, and then it flew away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, <laughs> that'll teach them. Right, but did you see the purple ones in 2018? Mm -hmm. No, I heard about them, but I totally missed them. I never saw them. You're gl it's so good that you didn't. It fucked me. It fucked me. Yeah. Yeah. So we, we left we left the bathroom in the pit doing all that, having our, our natural drink, walking, seeing those things come out. And I'm like, wait a minute. We're going towards those things. Those look like electric blood bugs that fly. Nope. nope. <laughs> <laughs> what are they doing? They're synchronized. It's okay. Let's go. Nico. <laughs> Then we got distracted by this big old house on chicken legs and lightsabers and orchestra music. Baba Yaga's house was one of the greatest pieces ever. That thing was just exquisite. So beautifully oh. finished from top to bottom. I just wish that I could have gone and met Baba Yaga at some point. Yeah, me too. The wait, 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 me, wait. There's a person? Yeah. There's a rotating cast of Baba's Yaga. There's a character basically inside the house that comes out and grabs people and takes them in. Oh, no, 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 no. That was just when Ice played Baba Yaga. Oh, no. Ice just decided to do that? Yes. There were other ah. Baba Yagas that were just <laughs> subdued and like sitting around and stuff like that. Our friend. Our friend is awesome. <laughs> yeah, is an awesome drag performer and a humongous personality. And like, of course he performed he the entire house. So he played in the house. Uh, he was Baba Yaga for, like, whatever hour stretch he got to be Baba Yaga that And he night. would drag people around and then tell them their fortune? Yeah, he kept <laughs> the door closed and had a line outside. And, like, one at a time, he would, like, That's shove someone the out the door, mm -hmm. um, slam the door closed, like, wait an indeterminate amount of time, pull someone else in, and then, you know, like, traipse them through the house and give them a curated experience. That's a really fun <laughs> gift and something that's fun to play. Yeah, he didn't just play Baba Yaga. He evoked Baba Yaga. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Yeah. Did you uh, did you get fucked with in any uh, enjoyable ways or did you do any enjoyable fucking with? Yes. Um, there was, I think when we left the listener appreciation 
party, somebody told me something about showers at Media Mecca. (laughs) Wonder who. (laughs) I I mean, they're there, but you have to get your token at the gift shop. (laughs) Oh, there was a token? I mean, I got a drink. I got to hang out in a really cool shady place and, you know, play and fuck with people. That's pretty good. Yeah, Media Mecca is really charming. I had never actually been there uh, until this year. And then it became awkward and we left. That's the ending of almost every Burning Man story. That's the part that is left out of almost every Burning Man story, is the part that how it ends is, and then it got awkward and we left. Well, uh, I gotta go uh, this way. <laughs> it's either yeah. that or disinterest. <laughs> yeah, I'm And done. then I wandered off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, actually, D-Day is our uh, pretty good excuse for us to get out of awkward situations, because he'll, he'll just, just wander leave. off. Yeah, yeah. and like, then we'd be like, oh, fuck, we gotta, we've got to find our D-Day. We have to go chase our are more awkward friend. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> if they're lucky, I have shouted bored as I've strode out of the place. Yeah, but he's pretty easy to find because we'll just like point ourselves at the brightest oh. light, walk about halfway there, and then turn off to the right. Yeah. I've heard from several podcasts of the adventures that you guys go on, the, the three of you. So how do you guys locate each other? Do you guys have a call? There is often a call. Oh, honestly, um, the call is usually D-Day! <laughs> uh, last year, the call became Hey Fuckface. Hey Fuckface was the call for, for last year, or two years ago. In the pre-times of me knowing either Beth or Rex with the original crew that I went with, we had three calls. The first call was uh, ass ass, and the response was titties titties. And you would either find your friends that way or you would find cool people that way. So that worked like just as a blanket thing. If somebody's doing the response, it's just like, well, I'm hanging out with you now. Where are you going next? I had uh, two camps after that that I ran with the same people. And because it was my camp and I had to fill out the application like at the last minute because like nobody gave me warning and they were like, well, it's your responsibility. Do it today. I gave our (laughs) camp nonsense names. Like Camp ba 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 and Camp Doot Doot Boom. And uh, on those years, those were our calls for finding each other. You just need something to shout. Something with consonants. So, right. So with bubbles, it's bubbles. And then we scream boobs. Or if it's boobs, bubbles. For our group, like the Urban Fairy Hollow, we either bleat like goats. Oh, I like the animal sound ones. Uh-huh. Ah. Oh, a goat bleat. That carries, too. It's uh-huh. designed to. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> D-Day hangs out with weird goats. Or it's Always Marco. Has. <laughs> oh! Porno. Marco Porno. One of my favorite was zebras, which is oot, 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 oot. Zebras. Yeah, that's oot, the sound. Oot, oot, oot. It's a very unique sound. Right, because nobody else knows that sound. Right. And there's like a dance party going on and everybody's partying. And the so. h- hard thing with any Marco anything is you're going to get a lot of responses that aren't your group. Because if you Marco in a crowd of burners, you're going to get yelled s- a bunch of stuff back. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Nope. Looking for porno. Yeah. <laughs> anal porno. Anal porno. I know our group. <laughs> you, you, you know, you have that like those are those. I'm I'm part of those sick motherfuckers right there. Those ones. Yeah, the ones that shout together in the dusty darkness (laughs) (laughs) truly are the dearest of friends. Uh, Real early one morning, early in my Burning Man career, somebody was wandering around my neighborhood going, Sonoma, (laughs) over and over again. (laughs) So that was our call for years. But but you had to really hit the wine at the top of it. (laughs) Sonoma. That's something. Yeah. Hey, fuckface worked pretty well. Yes. I don't know if we're getting rid of that. I love hey, fuckface. Yeah. It's also, it's, it, it, it. Gets, it's very us. It, <laughs> <laughs> it's very versatile. Uh-huh. You can, you can get so much conveyed with intonation. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I mean, as hey, a fuck face. Hey, fuck face. Yeah. Hey, fuck face. <laughs> I was like, hey, hey fuck face. Hey, fuck face. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my god, I adore you guys. Hey, fuckface. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, it's too bad you couldn't come down oh, and yeah, hang out and bring really us sausages. To actually hang out with you in person. and In time. In time. It's true. My daughter's here because she lives with us, obviously. And then uh, her trio, Tay and Ditto, and they're clergy to us. But we've been sharing germs with those motherfuckers since before COVID. So whatever. And then Wesley's with us, and we know Wesley from the pagan community. Mm -hmm. And he needed a break from his mom being overly like, sanitize everything. Yeah, people, it's... Every hour. It is a very hard time to be trapped with people that are not easy to be around. We're all fairly lucky in our being around people. But boy, whew. So that comes back to Bernie with my wife. I share a bedroom with her 365 days, willingly. I don't want that at burn. I want to have my own bedroom. <laughs> I, I know a lot of people who burn like that. That is a, a pretty common model. I mean, I totally understand the difference between how you share a room when you have showers and you have time and your brain is in the right way all of the time and you're not starving and not sunburned and not dying is very different than the way you share space otherwise. Mm -hmm. What kind of burn have you been doing, Beth? Oh, <laughs> the best horrible. kind. Oh, I've had a lot of hard burns. Oh, they've been great. Certainly have been sunburned, somewhat dying and altered and been uh -huh. like, oh, gosh, Rex, you and I have just thrown our clothes on the floor for two, two days. <laughs> it's cool. I just think there might be a cleanish pair of underwear down here somewhere. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> See, my wife's a daytime kid. She loves the sun, but she got that brown skin. I'm white as fuck and burn. I'm a nighttime kid. Oh, so you guys are on like different, different, different schedules. Oh, yeah. That's cool. Direct sun. I can't deal with that. Nope. I sit in camp naked with a wet sarong and a fan and a spray bottle. How have you uh, tackled the sleeping situation? I only need four hours. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you the sneak army them in? taught me well. <laughs> yeah, that's the truth. Boo snoozes two hours. Just give me two hours. <laughs> You, you you do do you do like a like a five to nine kind of sleep? I like siesta because it's just too fucking hot. So you just sit and lay around and spray yourself. Um, this year I had to learn to just spray myself with peppermint oil and water, not the lavender, because I had a campmate that was sensitive to lavender. Yeah, lavender's gross. Now we know. Yeah, floral notes are and gross. Glitter. I mean, glitter is just an affront. Well, shit. I bought you way too many pastilles for your birthday. I agree. <laughs> yes, you did. I didn't want to bring it up this way, but this is how I decided to air it. <laughs> so chamomile and peppermint. So it's calming and the peppermint opens your pores and your chakras pulls you off. Mm hmm. I guess that's not dissimilar to what I do, but it's mostly sitting in almost hot sun with my friends around camp where no one can motivate to leave. Yep, drinking <laughs> tepid brew. Yes. Hey, does someone have some ice? Yes, we're all dumping <laughs> our beers, our hot beers in your two ice cubes. This is why you go and volunteer at Artica. Oh, yeah. Because I'm a princess bitch. Ice is for cocktails. Fuck your water. You can drink it warm. And if it's warm, you're not drinking enough. Honestly, when I first went to Burning Man, I thought I was like high maintenance. I like to shower every fucking day. And I, I'm terrible at sleeping when I'm not in a place that I'm familiar with. I like food upsets my stomach. I'm just like a kind of... Uh, sensitive to everything. And I thought when I went to Burning Man that it was going to be a problem. And then I just found out at Burning Man, everything hurts all of the time. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it doesn't really matter. <laughs> yeah. It's it's like you go real low maintenance. It's like, well, of course you're gross. Yeah. <laughs> like, of course your stomach hurts. What have you eaten for the past day? Yeah, you <laughs> slouch right. right into that pretty quick. Yeah, I was really <laughs> pleased with my scum inner scumbag coming out and being like, ah, I am gross at heart. <laughs> yeah. I forget That's that other people take that as like an insult. What? Scumbag? Scumbag. No, scumbag's yeah. a lovely thing. Like, we're all just genial scumbags here. <laughs> let, let me tell you, this is my campmate, Soji, Marcy, my army bitch. She got Soji because she was so gross in her overalls. But let me tell you, the playa 
did that bitch's hair so gross that she had the best hair? <laughs> Some people get real anime out there. She didn't go last year, and I missed her dearly because she's being a grandma and helping her daughter. And again, Soji. That's sweet. That's a legit reason to miss a year. Did you bring your daughter out? I miss out? her. She's my daughter. I want her to go with me next year. That would be, that That seems like a good time. 22 is a good time to go. Uh-huh. <laughs> well, she'll be 22 um, May 23rd. 23 was my first year. Your, your daughter yeah. Your yeah. daughter was born on but, 523 and she's going to maybe go to Burning Man at age 23. Yeah. yeah, that's her That's her golden year. Very auspicious numbers. Yes. yes. <laughs> 23 is a great but, year to go. Like, skidoo. you're all stupid but excitable. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you got, like, a lot of sexual power and no idea what to do with it. Full executive function oh, just going online. Max. You're like, oh, shit, I, I, I'm in charge of all of this. Oh, uh-huh. yeah. That was, oh, my God, Burning Man my first year at 23. I kept having this constant reincurring thought of, like, who is in charge? Like, why, <laughs> who is in charge of this? Why isn't anyone in charge of this? Like, <laughs> it happened so many times that first year. But it's just like, wait, well, how is not anyone in charge of this? Oh, shit, am I in charge of this? <laughs> so my daughter is pagan raised. And so her and I are at a different level now. I'm not parenting her anymore. I'm not a verb. And we party together and it's fun as fuck. And then there's times where I have to step away and say, nope. Uh But for her 23rd, I said, I really want you to go. And she's like, I'm not ready. I'm not ready. Take Jay Mama. So my wife went and I said, okay, we can all go. My goal is to do cafe. I can have one. I want you to be that twin flame with me at cafe and camp with me there. And then come and work, do coffee with me. Yeah. What did you like about the coffee shift? It sounds like you were really into them. I love coffee. Uh huh. I love coffee with alcohol. Uh, that's the best kind of coffee. Um, I love shade. I mean, my first year I went and got and brought my Kahlua. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Yeah, that's a hundred percent shade over the the baristas working at coffee shop. That's true. Yep. And, and there's shade. I could be a shady bitch serving coffee, seeing all kinds of fucking fabulous people. I met some really rad people at the cafe. I've had some really rad experiences, and I'm still connected to them all the way up to Canada to a mom down in Reno. You know, they have a a block, like four blocks for kids. I know, it's kind of gross. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's kind of gross, but you want to know something? I have an 11-year-old right now. When he turns 13, your rites of passage, you want to go to Burning Man? Okay, this is how it is. Yeah. But I'm not going to camp in um, Kidville because we've been doing this since the beginning because we go to pagan festivals. So. so they're used to sort of group camping experiences. And like, it's not the end of the world if you see a dong. <laughs> right, or, or tits. Or if you see people who are acting irrationally, like in ways that you do not understand. <laughs> right. We had littles in our camp this year and that was different for me. Oh, yeah. How was that for you? Not at Burning Man. Not for me. No, I'm fine that that is a kink that people want to do and explore. I am not fine with hanging out with children. Burners are intense and they're, they, then they fucking, guess what? They mutate and they have kids. Burner has kids. Kids have always been part of it, right? Yeah, of course. I emotionally believe that it should be a big family event. I want it to be that thing. I still am just annoyed at children because I don't like them. I have them. I get it. They're gremlins. <laughs> yeah. If people raise their children in such a way that they could take them to Burning Man and have it be a positive experience, the world would be a much better place. Burning Man should be for families. I, I completely Wait. agree. I'm even encouraging... But I don't have to camp with them all the time. Nope. Right. And they can't be my responsibility. You know, I think part of my problem with it is because there's still some small lizard-like maternal part of my brain that is like, is anyone watching that? Is is that anybody's... 
Like, do I have to make sure it doesn't kill itself? Because someone needs to be making sure it doesn't kill itself. Like, it just is exhausting. And I I'm going to set my kid loose out there with that bracelet that tethers that drone to you that just flies behind you, foaming you. And he's going to get to run around and like, I'll just look at the display. There's kids. I mean, I want to bring my 13 year old kid, but I would have to talk to my campmates and say, is it OK? If not, OK, we're going to go into Kidville or we're just going to camp by ourselves. My partner and his wife from Seattle are going to bring their kid. They were thinking about this year, but now clearly not. Um, How old? Uh, this year, she would have been six. So <sighs> it's like eight-ish. Mm -hmm. uh, and they're mm -hmm. definitely camping in Kidsville. I wouldn't bring a single-digit child to Burning Man. No? I'd bring a double-digit. Really? I, I don't know. I, I, like, really think little kids would be delighted the most by Burning Man. It's not for me. It's not for me. I mean, if it's for other people, cool. Right. It is a lot of caregiving and yeah. stuff where it's like, they're going to have to have a trailer. They're going to have to like right. rinse that kid off. And let me tell you, we had a toddler. Let's see. I think we had a two-year-old and a six-year-old in camp. They did great. I mean, we went on this like carousel, but was hammocks. Oh, that sounds nice. It was for a minute and then I got dizzy. Mm -hmm. That was fun to experience with the kids. Children aren't my thing at all. The idea of being <laughs> responsible for one in Playa sounds like a nightmare. Although I do appreciate it if parents are up for doing that. And one of the great things about if Kat and John come and do it is and do it with Kidsville is that there's sometimes when you can be off duty. And they already did this great festival that is called Goodness. That was a family festival where people would be... Is that that one down in California? Goodness is up in Washington, or was. I think they finished. Ooh. But, like, it was... Mm -hmm. It was like, hey, everyone volunteers, you cook some, you do some of these things, including that they'd like have two stages up in the hills and there'd be people like on duty with like a walkie talkie at in around the kids tents. Mm -hmm. So there's like someone on duty with the kids tent so you can go do stuff if you would like to. I wouldn't mind checking out um, Kidsville, but I mean, my kids also do pagan stuff. So my daughter is now, what, 21 in, in this community since nine years old. She's been staying up and drumming until about 11 o'clock and then it's time to go to bed or go back to camp. You don't have to go to bed, but you can't be at main fire. I kind of adore that your daughter is like, I'm not old enough yet for Burning Man. Like, I'm not ready. That is kind of sweet. I stop pushing on at me, Mom. I know I'm 21, but stop. I'm not ready. Aw. <laughs> it sounds like a kid that knows themselves and, you know. She's probably right. Here's your Mary Poppins bag. Here you pee outside of the tent or in the bucket. I, I mean, I'm not shitting you. Like, I did it at 23, and that is the first possible year that wouldn't have been an utter disaster for me. My first two years were pretty disastrous, and I went at 21. 21 and 22 were yeah. both real bad, Yeah, right? I, think it, I think it was maybe 24. Why? What made it so bad? Uh, You're just a fucking idiot. Yeah, yeah, it was a dope. <laughs> and I'm like, you don't know how to relationship, and you don't know how to drugs or alcohol, and you don't know how to, like, just be or walk up to other human beings and have a conversation. Like, it's just, you don't know yet how to go with all of that, at least if you're me. <laughs> <laughs> and to just have the confidence to be there. No, I was an embarrassment. I, I should have been <laughs> nowhere near that very cool party. <laughs> And that was Nico. Wow. Yay, Nico. <laughs> um, so we kind of talked in the episode about uh, going to Burning Man with uh, our partners and how that can be a really good, really fun idea if you're all simpatico, but could be a really difficult relationship straining or breaking thing. If you're not simpatico. Yeah, I find it's helpful if you hook up at Burning Man the first time. Then at least you may not uh, be simpatico outside of Burning Man, but you are simpatico inside. At least you know Ooh. you like each other at Burning Man. Uh -huh. if, if you forge a relationship in a stress test, <laughs> then, you know, as long as you're fine hanging out when it's not stressful, you've got yourself some gold. 
You've got yourself a relationship at Burning Man yeah. going. Yeah. You haven't done that test yet. I have though. Not not with current partner. No, I have not. Yeah. <laughs> I've gone to Burning Man with all of my partners. Yeah, I've gone to Burning Man with all of my last three partners. I've done a bunch of the stress tests in, <laughs> in my current relationship that you would go through at Burning Man. I mean, you did just go through COVID, which everyone who still has a relationship after COVID either, wow, good relationship, or oh my God, I'm so sorry, please get out. Yeah, if your relationship survived COVID and it doesn't survive Burning Man, well, what a weird relationship you've got. I mean, Burning Man just rips it apart a lot. I mean, COVID's been really long. Ah, uh, yeah, I guess. But, like, Burning Man is, like, COVID is the foreseeable stress test. It's like you're going to be up in each other's grill or not seeing each other at all or not enough. Mm -hmm. You're going to be way too close or way too far away. They are kind of the opposite stress tests. It's like yeah. the stress test of, like, you get all or nothing of somebody or, or the, the stress test of you've both got, like, overstimulation. How do you parse that with your how, relationship? How do you get along... Uh, when there's everything to do. Mm -hmm. I've been at Burning Man with a partner that was like, fuck off, we're all going to do our own things. Let's explode in opposite directions. Mm -hmm. And that actually worked really well for me with that partner. <laughs> I've been to Burning Man with a partner who's like, oh, I just want to hang out in my tent all day. And that was irritating. That's odd. Yeah. I'm very good at running away from discomfort at Burning Man. As you all know, and as we discuss in this episode with me just disappearing and wandering off as uh, a means of deflection and keeping my up up. And Listen to who's been to therapy. Hey, everyone should go to therapy if you think you might need therapy. If you're not happy, go to therapy. Government, give us therapy. Everyone needs therapy from time to time. Mm-hmm. Accuracy Third is produced by Accuracy Third. And by therapy. We've uh, all been in therapy? I've never been to therapy. Have you never been in therapy? No. You're so grounded. I was raised by hippies. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this episode is brought to you by Should Have Been Raised by Hippies. Oh, Aww. fuck. Wait, no. I got the short end of that stick. That sucks. <laughs> Ah, stop oh, listening to the episodes, Pop. <laughs> <laughs> the music in this episode was by one of the delightful bands that gives us the rights to their music. I don't know which yet. You should really check the show notes because oh, the song in between us talking, that shit slapped. <laughs> <laughs> Our music, whatever it was, slapped. Would you like your slapping music to be used in our episodes and then credit it only in the show notes because we haven't figured it out yet when we record our outro? Reach out to us at accuracythird at gmail.com. That's also where you can get a hold of us if you would like to participate in this fantastic podcast about the experience of being a participant at Burning Man. You can call us live. You can record shit. You can write us. You can, sometime in the near future... Come visit us in the studio when we're all vaccinated. Would you like to record with us and then wonder where that recording is for well over a year and then suddenly have it dropped? <laughs> well, you're in luck. We have a slow turnaround time. So get, get, a, get a hold of us now if you would like your interview to air in the next couple of years. We got anything in that inbox? You want to start checking that inbox again? Oh, I okay. thought you were on the inbox. Do I need to get back on the inbox? <laughs> I haven't looked at the inbox since I worked in an office a year ago. Oh, my God. For real? Yes. Okay, guess what, guys? None of us have been looking at the email. Oh, so. <laughs> Next week or the week after, we'll put out an episode of uh, us doing a mailbag then. So stay tuned for that. And we'll see you at Burning Man, maybe. Don't. You're hurting don't tease what might not happen. Black Rock City 2021. I did not sign up for edging. Terra <clears throat> incognito. Ugh. I don't find edging hot. I find it irritating. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs>
you know. So you're juggling spoons in there? Um, no, it's my glass mason jar with vodka and a copper straw. Ah, because paper and plastic are wasteful. Cool. Um, yeah. Can you drink that not with a straw? Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. That's that's a real sharp tinkle to have to keep pulling out of the audio. Fucking fairies. You should understand that D-Day makes the effort to include the phrase sharp tinkle in every recording we do. Well, I do now. <laughs> And uh, and hit us up on social media if you want merch. Um, I will absolutely yeah. make Sharp Tinkle merch. That's amazing. Yeah, is like Sharp Tinkle merch more like nails or more like razor blades? What exactly are you peeing? Uh, it's stones, man. It's it's little horrible sharp stones. All right, don't so, worry, you'll get there. So I've classical seen how you Sharp Tinkle. <laughs> I like the tinkle from bells. Mm-hmm. 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 Are Are you saying that you're into water sports with southern rich girls? No. <laughs> okay, maybe I'm interpreting this wrong. Okay, Disney princesses. It's Disney princesses, isn't it? Kind of, sort of, with a pagan twist. <laughs> so no, a big ass pagan twist. <laughs> So you you are telling me that you haunt the staff bathrooms at Disney World while wearing a Baphomet mask? No, I'm that weird person that's a fairy who likes to play in, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in the bathroom making my little bells jingle when little girls are in there like, Mommy, I heard a bell. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> or I'm mischievous and I glitter punk you. No. As long as you're not doing that in the portos. Mm-mm, 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 mm-mm. <laughs> that doesn't feel good on petals or twigs and berries. Mm-mm. It really doesn't. Or buttholes. No, nor no does it. euphemism for buttholes? Just laying <laughs> buttholes bare? Uh, 